of superconducting solenoid and forward fall for the energy storage in SMASH. Many of us do not understand what SMASH. It's a kind of energy storage device, but it's not that much common. So you might not uh, understand what it is. So at first, I will tell something, some uh, briefly about the SMASH system. After that, I will uh, talk about the necessary parameters. And after that, I will describe one of the softwares we have developed for our this study. And after that, we will go for our optimization workflow and we'll show the results. So what's SMASH? SMASH stands for Superconducting Magnetic Energy Storage System. When a DC current is flows through a superconducting coil, like here, it stores the energy and the energy is inductive and given by a very well-known equation, E equals half of Li square. We have said that if the energy is inductive, so here L is the inductance of the coil and I is the current that flows through the coil and the energy can be discharged through the network by this network. Here is the typical diagram of a SMASH system. Here we have a superconducting magnetic coil, cryogenic refrigeration for maintaining the superconducting phenomena, the power conditioning system, and the control circuit that converts the electricity from AC to DC, and the coil protector. And the coil itself for the heart of a SMASH system, and we are dealing with that. And it comes with two different configurations. The first one is solenoid, and the next one is the toroid. Now, I have mentioned earlier that the inductance and the energy both are important for our calculation. So we will first see the inductance calculation of the solenoid system. Here is how we have a typical three-dimensional figure of a superconducting solenoid configuration coil. And we, uh, it is the inner diameter here. This is the outer diameter. And this is a typical pancake layer made of HTS coils. It can be tritium barium copper oxide or BFCCO. It can be uh, it can be this type of HTS uh, superconductor superconducting cage. And this is the main thing we need to calculate that inductance. It's a very long equation, and each each and every variable are dependent on other variables. And in the case of toroid, this is the inductance equation, and this is the typical three-dimensional figure of a toroid. In order to calculate it more efficiently, we have developed a new program called the SMASH PCC, which is developed in Visual Studio, in, uh, uh, written by Visual Basic. Here, here it is a GUI, the graphical user interface of that program. And here you can see that uh, you can calculate each and every thing that, uh, that needs to be uh, for the study. And this is one of the facility here. If you give the inputs, you need to really get every required parameters here and also we have implemented a study characteristics section like the Excel, like the MATLAB or any other scientific software. If you are dealing with lots of data, you can actually study the characteristics here. You can show, you can see the relationships among the parameters. Now we can go to the ultimate goal of our study. We have in here is the coil specification. It's a BI-223 silver coated super, uh, high temperature superconductor. And these are its uh, currents at different temperatures. And at first, we are considering 14 pancake layers. And this is the inner diameter and this is the outer diameter. And this is the thickness of the coil. And after that, we have considered two different cases. In the first case, as you can see, we have kept a inner diameter fixed and considered different, different outer diameters. You can see it here also. And after that, we have done the reverse. We have decreased or increased the inner diameter, keeping the outer diameter constant. By doing that, we have observed that the inductance when we keep the pancake layer fixed and keep the outer diameter fixed with the increase of inner diameter, as the superconducting material decreases, the inductance goes down by that. But the opposite case happens when we keep the pancake layer fixed, the 
number of uh, the inner diameter space, but we vary the outer diameter, the energy goes up. And you can see the three dimensional picture of this. You can see that the outer diameter increases, the energy also increases, the thing that also increases, and the opposite thing occurs when we increase the inner diameter, the energy as well as the inductance decreases. After that, we have varied the pancake layers. In, that, in the previous study, we have studied the 14 pancake layers, but now we have, uh, uh, we have increased the number of pancake layers, and each time, suppose we have considered two pancake layers, then we have considered this thing again. That is, we have varied the inner diameter or the varied the outer diameter. And we have seen that. Here's some interesting results occurs. In the case of uh, variable number of pancake layers, variable inner diameter with fixed number of uh, fixed uh, outer diameter, we have seen that the uh, inductance uh, rises to a certain value and ultimately goes down, but there is no effect for the outer diameter when we vary the number of pancake layers. 